Hi and welcome to WAH videos. My name is Skip and this is part two on engine failure. So if you haven't watched the first video, I recommend you do that first to get familiar with how to land without an engine. And you do that in the pattern at your airport. So now we're going to learn how to handle an engine failure during a flight. So I did a video or a little series on flight planning a year or two ago, and we're going to recreate that flight. So here's the flight plan. We're in Sky Vector, and this is Benton Field, my favorite airport where I fly out of in real life occasionally. And if you did that video series with me, you remember we flew from Benton to the power plant, to a rest area, to a fairground, and then to Deer Creek Airport, and then to Chico. So I'm going to load this up. I'm going to create another flight plan and determine the distance and time for each one of these legs. And that's the nice thing about Sky Vector. It tells you the distance here. But the main reason I want to do this is for time. That's going to be important in this. And you'll understand this as we go along, the importance of having a flight log so you know where you are at all times. So I've gone ahead and loaded all this information into my new and improved digital flight log. So this is the new digital flight log that I'm working on. It's not available yet. It still has some bugs. So we're going to enter the first leg and we come over here and we are going to load the first leg. And so we have our altitude, the wind direction, wind velocity, the temperature, our speed, we're taking off. And then we have our course. And if we look here, well, you can't see it here, but 177 is our, is our first leg, 176, pardon me. And we have our distance of four miles. And we're going to calculate that. So we click on the Calculate button. And this tells us we're going to use 0.34 gallons of fuel. And it's going to take two minutes and 42 seconds. This is what's important. Now we can load the rest of these legs here. So let's go ahead and just load everything else up so you can see what's going on. And then we'll calculate each one. <clears throat> let's see. 11 miles. This is going to take seven minutes and 20 seconds. So there's our flight plan. The other thing I want to do with my navigation log is write down some information. So we have the Reading Muni ATIS 124.1 and the Reading VOR 108.4 along with the Red Bluff VOR at 115.7 and we have the Chico ATIS. And I'm going to print this all out. All right, here we are on runway 33 at Benton Field, ready to take off on our little flight. And as you remember, we're going to leave Benton Field and go out here to the power plant. That's our first leg. Now I've gone ahead and set up the weather so it matches our flight. Actually, it should be the other way around. Anyway, we have the winds of 340 the speed 12 knots, and the temperature at 20 C. So we're all set there. Next, I went ahead and set up engine failure. So we come here to failures, engine, and you see here I have 25 minutes. So engine number one is going to fail in 25 minutes. What I'm going to do is unpause the simulator and I'm going to go have a cup of tea and do some other things so I lose track of time. So I don't know exactly when this is going to happen. Idea being is I'm going to follow this flight plan and at some point along the way the engine is going to fail. And I'm not exactly sure when that's going to happen. So this will be just like it would happen in real life. Hopefully it never will, but that's the idea of this, to give you an idea of what could actually happen on a real flight. So the first leg to the power plant should take 2 minutes and 42 seconds. Now we're taking off on runway 33 instead of 15, so it's going to take a little longer than that. 
I'm going to write the actual time down right in here and put down the arrival time here. We're going to leave roughly at noon so it'll give us an idea when we get there. The idea being I want to make sure when I get there I write the time down and compare it with what our chart says what it ought to be under these conditions and then make adjustments as we go. So I'll continue doing that through each one of these legs and keep track of how I'm doing, how long it's going to take. And this way when the engine fails I'm going to know pretty much exactly where I am and I'll be able to make a rather quick decision on where I want to try and land. Now if you remember earlier I had up here some information that I thought might come in handy. And so I have the Reading ATIS and the Reading VOR and the Rub Bluff VOR frequencies. So I've gone ahead and placed those in NAV1 and NAV2. So I have NAV1 set for uh, KRDD VOR 108.4 and 115.7 for Red Bluff. But having this information for all the airports that are around you on your flight is a really good idea. The more information you have, the better off you're going to be. So, we're going to pick this up right at the engine fail point. So here we are right over the, the rest area, which is our second waypoint here, power plant to the rest area. And now we want to head to the fairgrounds. And this leg took 6 minutes and 20 seconds. If we take a look at our clock here, 6 minutes, 21 seconds to get to this point. So let's reset our clock. And we're, now we're going to continue on to our next waypoint. And that waypoint is going to be the fairgrounds. So we're going to change our course to our heading 132 and it says here it's going to take 4 minutes and 55 seconds. That's the estimate. So let's see how we do. Alright, I'm not going to go over all the stuff I covered in the first video here about getting the right airspeed, finding the best landing, and the checklist you need to go through. I suggest you go back and watch that again if you haven't watched it. Uh, so you know what I'm talking about, but I'm going to give you a brief overview on the things that we need to do when we find ourselves with an engine failure. So there's an acronym that a lot of instructors use, ABC. That stands for airspeed, the best landing area, and then the checklist. And we get the checklist from our pilot operating handbook. And this is the handbook for the Cessna 172N and you can find the engine failure procedure here. It shows you here how far you can glide and we can go back a couple of pages and we see here engine failure during flight and forced landing procedures. So we want to commit all these things to memory. Now you can go over and watch that first video but this is basically the things that you need to have memorized this is no time to be picking up the handbook trying to figure out what to do when your engine fails so the other tools we want to use during this crisis would be the sectional chart so a good pilot is going to have his sectional chart with him and his course laid out on it so he can make references to that so we can find out where he is and what's in nearby. So the other important tool would be, of course, our navigation log. This will help us determine our location. Let's see how that works. All right, we've had our engine failure. We are three minutes and 38 seconds away from our last waypoint. And let's take a look at our waypoint here, rest area to the fairgrounds. 4 minutes and 55 seconds, so roughly 5 minutes to get there. We're a little over halfway, maybe more. We break out our sectional chart, and here's the rest area. Here's the fairground. <clears throat> 3 minutes or so, we can determine that we're roughly right about here. And now we need to make a decision. Where are we going to go from here? Well, we have Red Bluff Airport 
and we have Lake California. Those are two airports that we might want to consider one of those. And then, of course, we want to be looking for an area around here if we can't make it to either one of these airports. And one of those airports would be my first choice. Much, much safer landing at an airport. All right, so to determine that, let's take our altitude. And looking at our handbook here, we can see that at 6,000 feet, we can go six miles. So we're 5,500. So we're going to be a little less than six miles. We'll call it five and a half miles. We can roughly cover five and a half miles. So this chart is telling us basically for every thousand feet, we can travel about one mile. So that's good information and that's easy to remember. So again, let's take a look at our sectional chart and we've determined that we're right about here. And it looks to me like we're a lot closer to the Red Bluff than to Lake California. And the other factor would be, well, we know from our flight plan that the winds are coming out of the north. So we would have a tailwind going to Red Bluff and we would be heading into the wind going to Lake California. Another consideration would be, or could be, there may be help here for our mechanical problems at Red Bluff at a private airport and no such luck. So let's see if we can't make it to Red Bluff. So if you remember at the beginning of our flight, I set the NAV1 radio to the Red Bluff VOR. So now I take a look at the DME, 8.9 miles. Well, if we go back to the sectional chart, we find that the VOR is south of the airport and it looks like about three or four miles. So we're looking at maybe six, five, six miles to the airport. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna give that a shot. I'm gonna turn towards the airport and just see how that goes. Obviously, I'm gonna be looking for other landing areas if I can't make it there, but that I think would be the best choice. So A and B of our ABCs has been uh, accomplished. I've got the speed at 65 knots and I'm heading towards Red Bluff. Now I have some time. How much time? Well, I'll just kind of keep an eye on the vertical speed and then just do some math. And during that time now, I'm going to set the squawk to 7700 so people will know I'm in trouble. I'm going to make a radio call to Red Bluff traffic and let them know that I'm coming in and look out. This is an emergency. And then I'm going to go through the checklist and make sure everything is set up. Is it just in case I don't make the airport, I can be prepared to land in a field or some other place. And of course, I'll be trying to restart the engine on this little trip to the airport. It would be really silly if I got there and the engine started when I was on the ground. I want to make sure that I've gone through all the steps that I can make the safest landing possible. And the best way to do that is to be prepared. Know all the airports that are along your route so you can get to an airport and not have to land in a field. Know where you are at all times during your flight. Don't get lost up there in conversation or playing around and be totally lost. Know where you are. Have the emergency procedures committed to memory so you don't have to be searching for answers when you don't have a lot of time. Put them on a cheat sheet that you can have in your pocket or in your flight bag right there where you can grab really quickly if you need to. A good pilot should always be prepared, always have a plan for emergencies that may arise so, you, so they're not caught off guard. All right, I'm guessing you got my point. Be prepared. Now, if you're not on a flight, you're just out flying around your airport, you're going around practicing your turns around a point or whatever, know your area. Know where you are. Know the airports that are around you. My instructor, when I was doing turns around a point and things like that, he would point out all the closed airports and all the private airports in the area that we were practicing in. So if there was ever a problem, 
we could land on an airport most of the time, either somebody's private airport or a, a runway that has been closed for a long, long time. Again, being prepared. All right, I think that's enough for this video on engine failure in flight. No, I'm not going to force you to watch me try and make that landing at Red Bluff. I'll let you think about that and determine if I made it or not. Better yet, go out and try this flight or a flight that you want and see how you do. Make your best choices. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked this, please click the like button. If you would like to leave a comment, that would be great. I answer all my comments. So thank you so much for watching and God bless.